Um, yeah, the um, this problem you might say, well, how does this relate to Jane's work? Well, back in the early 90s, Jane and David and uh, Louise Kirkus and I had a, a, a mutual um, ARC project to study comparative topics in Central Australian languages. And one of the things that led to was the weekly lunches, which still continue. Anyway, this is, you know, perhaps a, a late continuation of that project. It's about, you know, for Feshrift and you, you, you say, well, have I got a bit of research I thought I might like to do a bit more on sometime? Maybe it's not worth making a big production, but maybe I'll write it up. Well, I've been thinking about this suffix kata for some time, and I've gathered some stuff. There's different uses of it in common Young and Latin, especially in the West. Uh, and the question is how they relate etymologically, or if they are related etymologically, how they, what are the semantic developments between them, uh, what can be restructed, reconstructed. And this is perhaps what you could call the, an exercise in morphological reconstruction as an etymological method, which is. Was a paper I gave at Itchel Conference in 2001. Now, the languages I'll be referring to are in the West are, um, this is a kind of a hybrid classification, languages that O'Grady et al. called uh, Jungic in uh, Claire and Atkinson's classification. They divided them into the Northern and the Southern group. There's Rumbanyap and Modern Manwaki in the North. And then this maybe my hodgepodge thing, putting culture together. On basis that Alan Dench doesn't think that can, you can really distinguish, you know, either kind of month with it by innovations. And there's Kartu, and then there's some more for the South. But these are the ones I'll be talking about. Um, I should mention that nobody thinks Dura Dura is anymore in the Western group. Um, now, I'm going to start with the uh, function of clause subordination, partly because this is, and I'm taking the discussing languages largely from North to South. <clears throat> partly because this is a, an influential article of Jane's here, following work of Hale, on um, cases and complementizers in Walbury. <laughs> and um, here's, uh, you, you see that kata is added after the infinitive, that is a normalized form of verb, um, in a subordinate clause that indicates uh, an event that's contemporaneous with the main clause event and usually have the same subject. And you'll see that um, number two, if it's a transitive subject in the main clause, you get ergative agreement. But um, Jane and, and Ken Hale both noticed that sometimes you get it not on a, on a subordinate clause, but just on a noun or the action normal, what's called this hunting term. They use it during hunting. And you notice it's not a, cloud, a, a clause there, but you still get this father and the ergative agreement. Or even uh, one of Hale's examples are a man eating food while occupied with boomerang, while doing something with a boomerang, which presupposes a, a verb and um, verbal activity. And um, so I'll just make the point here that it may occur just on nouns. Now, Walmanpa, another Yapa language, has a similar situation. And again, agreeing with an ergative main subject. And so does Nardi, which is classified as a Western Roman language, but it's just to the west of Walbury. And, um, but there you'll notice that um, in six, the kata is added to a different form, not the ncha infinitive, but it's called an infinitive, but it's you know, something based on, on the, the relevant uh, conjugation marking consonant in u. So probably a uh, past tense originally or something like that, but it's still a non-finite form. And now uh, when you get to Momajari, um, it's described there as um, as a manner suffix. We'll see other things called manner suffix, but you notice that the use here is very similar to what we've seen so far. Um, he would sing while sharpening the axe. Um, notice though here that it's not added to a nominalized form, but it looks like I wonder, I doubt the retroflex in there, but it's, it's kind of the, the root with the relevant conjugation marker. But it's, um, but also in, in Walmajari, you can add this so-called manner suffix just to the noun, go around on speaking tour, that is involved with. So kind of in both <clears throat> Walbury and Walmajari, you can use it on just the noun, being involved with, with maybe some kind of verbal activity presupposed. Um, 
Myrla is a modern language, and here the form is also glossed in the bridge of Agnes, Jesus as a manner. And here, notice it comes after the, the U form. I should say, I thought one of the voluntary did one stage as well. Okay, but it's it's the uh, infinitive here is the U form. Um, if it's it carving, it's, it's very much like what we've seen before. But here, unlike the others in 11, you don't have to have a subject agreeing between the two clauses. You can get, I saw him while he was seated. So it looks like this is across the languages, requirement of the same subject is not necessarily the case. Now, in uh, sometimes you get this car coming after a new, but then there's what Bridget calls an epithetic pile in there. There's an in there. And um, well, and, and then it's combined with ga, which is from the verb carry ultimately. And this is my discovery too late for my big article on associated motion, but it's got in a footnote, associated motion in mono. Um, but at the same time, but also with this inkara form, sometimes it's um, subsequent motion, get up and go, not getting up, go. Okay. Now in the Pilbara, you, you've got a similar um, suffix, but they, they have different conjugation determined consonants, el, or, or none before it. So it, it's still, I would claim, a kind of a normalized form. And as far as I know, nobody's related these to the kind of thing we've seen in the Nobunyapa and modern languages, but you see something very similar. I get hot sitting in the sun. Dench called it a contemporary. Um, Austin called it an imperfective relative. Um, but it does the same kind of thing we've been talking about before. Um, and in fact, even in 16 and five, you get um, the ergative agreement. So my interim conclusion is that we use Hikata with three different kinds of non-finite verbs, incha form or the u form or just the consonant Hikata. So they're not the same form, so it's maybe not inherited directly, but they all use nominal suffixes. Um, and usually subordinate clauses are marked by case, a point made in a James article, except Hikata isn't the case, but it's case like in many respects. So <clears throat> we're going to see that there are a lot of nominal suffixes caught up. So I'm suggesting that probably languages that independently create verb forms using a pre existing nominal suffix and adding it to subordinate clauses. So therefore, the origin should not be looked at in. <laughs> um, did I do something? It, it, it shouldn't be looked It should be looked for a nominal word. I can keep talking. Yeah. Okay, so um, a lot of languages have a suffix kata <coughs> added after um, something indicating a manner. Now in Wamajari, it's it's kind of like a disposition, sitting around or gathering while bending over. Again, it's kind of a secondary predicate that indicates some some characteristic of the action, or even it's a kind of like an idiophone. The, it fell with a clock, or it goes around shuffling. So um, these are. This is probably why it's called manner in some of these languages. Now, in some languages too, it's aspectual, and this is uh, the definite the <clears throat> explanation they use for Gurinji. And in fact, in the uh, the short grammar in the Gurinji dictionary, you have this contrasted pair. The, the child is swimming versus just swims. And then it's, you've got this covert lilage, or lilage, but lilage kara makes it imperfective. Now, I'm going to suggest that there may be a relationship between this and, and the, the subordinate uses. Comes from Mitch Brown and he says that in Walman, the, basically the, the kara clause, the activity there encompasses the main one. So it's, it's like longer duration. So hence, maybe a bit of a relationship to this aspectual, which in the Norman language is usually described as indicating durative or continuous or repetitive or iterative, and so on. Now, in a lot of uh, languages, especially down toward the Pilbara, you have broad association meanings, like the uh, Mangala, rain, rainy season, okay? 
Now your model, you can use a habitual agent, somebody who usually cooks, and there's added to fur. Um, you find them, uh, then she calls it a unifying suffix, something together with something, and there's a use here, a woman is sitting with lights. This is very similar to the proprietors we're having. In Yamal, it's also described as activity suffix, and now uh, here's something like work involved with language, language work. In Jibandi, Frank Wardicum has an unproductive suffix, looks like this a derivational suffix, but you see it's somewhat similar, something characterized by Ford or by, by Marx. And then there are extended uses of kata, which looks like just kata, the same kata as kind of association plus something more, commentative suffix that having in, in Mangala, meaning somebody who usually does something, usually carries something. The Gurinji, always shooting, or place where you always shoot, Walmajari, got a D uh, pertaining to, it's, uh, it's almost like the Denison suffix, people pertaining to this place, and Mangala, the same, water dwelling snake, a lot of languages have a inhabited, or Denison suffix, a similar thing, so is Makajung, which is a Western desert dialect. So in Nomanyapa, Maranawati, and Gaida subgroups, um, we've got these broad associative meanings, um, oops, right there. Um, which seem to therefore be inherited from a distant ancestral language and are given various particular applications in particular languages, including the use of the subordinate clause. Um, why don't you read that? If I have time. Agnew says, the manner suffix God, this is for Mangala, marks nominals and nominalized verbs in a wide variety of syntactic contexts. It has a broad associative meaning, which links an entity, an attribute, event, or state to another. Primarily, these functions act, these function as adjuncts, which provide adverbial information about an event or as secondary predications on one of its participants. Also functions as a complementizer or nominalized verbs in subordinate clauses of temporal coincidence and causal complements. Its adverbial derivatives generally involve the specification of time or manner and, approx and approximate to English participles with ing and paraphrastic expressions like in such and such a way. It is often described as a secondary activity or state of affairs holding at the time of the main assertion, translated as while, when, or doing. Okay, now we've got the dyadic meaning, which is, has been compared, I think, and it's in a lot of languages, especially in the Pilbara area, and then with Alamorse, Kara, Yarawara, or Yara. And then the Western Desert, and especially in Unexplained Rara, which is, seems to be an Alamorse of it. And it's, it's in all these subgroups, the, the more southerly ones, but also um, Western Desert, yeah, Wati. And in Marangu, Nyangu Mara, but alongside another one, Rangu, um, which occurs in languages and Wangu uh, in Mumanyapa, which is a result of the sound change Ardell. So uh, now the question is, is this dyadic meaning? No, what dyadic means is like on a kin term, like father in Creole and Northern Jerry, father together, that is father and child, or father and children. And um, now the thing is in, in uh, some of the Northern languages, you, you get it on some three syllable kin terms in Roman language, Ra. Now, if that's a reduction of the same thing, then the dyadic use of skills may be back to the ancestor follow, but it may not be because it's a similar thing in some non dominant languages. Um, thanks for some re referee for pointing this out. Um, now, Alan Dench talks about an article where he talks about all of these, and the question is, how are they all related? And, and he suggests, well, this duality thing. Well, dyadic is two, but it may be more. You can have a, um, maybe a development of something else. And Merlin and Heath, in an early article, 82, showed that proprietors, I'm sorry, that uh, dyadic terms in some Arnhem Land languages may come from proprietor having source or from dual. And in Creole, kitja from together, uh, brother kitja, brother kitja. Um, and otherwise, it's used as reciprocal. So, uh, therefore, it's reasonable to assume that the dyadic sense is specialized from a general associative sense and therefore uh, which developed at some point later so i'm reconstructing for the western language it's a general association now okay we could say this is something for a problem this is 
West and Pomignon. Um, but in Girbal, this has been compared to a bench in Boston. I think I mentioned this to an overview. One of a pair, and yeah, this looks a lot like dyadic, doesn't it? Uh, but it's not dyadic. The dyadic is tier, which it probably is cognate to a proprietor suffix in other queens of night. So another example of proprietor becomes dyadic. Carter is dual, but it's not the normal dual, but it's used um, in some pin terms, but it on demonstratives like bala, it is just balaka means they too. Now nobody's compared anything else in Queens, but I went looking around and could be launched this car. It marks plural on a few inch of terms that I'm doing every year. Car, which I think is cognate, is a collective plural according to Havel with some kin terms. So therefore, it seems that the original sense in the North Queensland language was to mark a set, potentially two, but maybe more entities. And um, therefore, this one of a pair sense in Durable is just a special use of a dual with names. And I think um, you'll find this happens elsewhere, like in Gimpa, Bula, which means to put it with a name, and it means that person is someone else. I think in Creole too, you could say like that. Um, Danger felony. Uh, okay, so what can we reconstruct? At what level? Um, Dearball and the other two Queensland languages aren't in the same subgroup, so the nearest uh, proto language would be proto pomignon So, therefore, it looks like this can be reconstructed proto pomignon But with what meaning? The Western General Association meaning or the Queensland set or collection? And the question is, well, what's the more likely direction of change? Um, and can we find examples? I'm not real sure of this. And then if, if it does start with general association, well, have we got parallels for getting dyadic meaning or the general association? I've since found a few more examples in the carnic language, which is a dyadic coming from propriety and things like that. Propriety is not all that different from general association. So, so I didn't fully answer it. You might say, what's the relevance of honor our, our honoree? Well, viewed etymologically, I'm claiming this kata is a single form which performs multiple functions, which are apparently different, but all ultimately related. Well, this is a, maybe an analog to Jane's engagement with Australian languages. It's one person, but she performs a host of different functions, which may <laughs> seem different, but they're all ultimately interrelated. 